Hi everyone, Britt Savell here. So they went and did it. They redefined sepsis after 25 years. So I thought I would take a few minutes and go over with you some of these exciting new definitions and what they mean. So as you can see from the slide here, we begin by starting out by talking about who did it. And this is a task force combining the Society of Critical Care Medicine with the European Society of Intensive Care Medicine, 19 members. And as you can see here, from critical care, infectious disease, surgery, and pulmonary specialists. This was published in JAMA, and you can see the reference here with the two lead authors being Mervyn Singer from England and Cliff Deutschman here from the United States and actually in the metro New York City area as part of the Northwell Health uh, System. So interestingly enough, for many years, there has been sepsis, severe sepsis syndrome, and septic shock, where infection and two or more SERS criteria was sepsis, and sepsis with acute organ dysfunction is severe sepsis syndrome, etc. SERS is out, severe sepsis is out, and there's a focus on really two clinical entities, sepsis and septic shock. And so there's a lot to this. This task force has done an incredible job not only coming up with these criteria, but using them and validating them against large clinical databases. That's not the focus of this video. What's in are new definitions and new clinical criteria. So let's get right to it. The definition of sepsis, as you can see here, is a life-threatening organ dysfunction caused by a dysregulated host response to infection. And this task force was very focused on choosing their words carefully, and that's why I'm quoting them this way. Septic shock, and to read it here, a subset of sepsis in which underlying circulatory and cellular metabolic abnormalities are profound enough to substantially increase mortality. The clinical criteria is what's more relevant for the practicing clinician and that the concept, as this is very, very different from before, is to th remember that sepsis is infection with organ dysfunction. The challenges remain in terms of does this patient actually have an infection or not, but that organ dysfunction can be identified as an acute change in total SOFA score of greater than or equal to two points consequent to the infection. And what I've done here is put up the SOFA score, and as you can see here from the article, sequential or sepsis-related organ failure assessment score, and it looks at six different organ systems, uh, neuro, uh, heart, lung, uh, liver, kidney, and heme, and gives each of them a score from zero to four. Zero is good, four is bad, and we can go over it here briefly. The respiratory system looking at the PF ratio, here you can see for yourself. Coagulation looking at the platelet count, greater than 150 all the way down to less than 20. They look at the liver by measuring the bilirubin, and the higher, the worse. Cardiovascular is interesting and, and mildly controversial because you can see here that it's the scoring system is based on whether or not you are on various inotropes or pressors, and many of us in critical care use these drugs less frequently, regardless, and what was brought up numerous times at the SCCM meeting was that regardless of the limitations of the SOFA score, it was validated against large clinical databases and really seemed to hold up quite well in terms of predicting mortality, and that's what the real focus is. The central nervous system abnormalities are measured by the Glasgow Coma Scale score, and you can see here from normal 15 down to less than 6. And then renal is measured by worsening creatinine or a measurement of low urine output. I would point out that the SOFA score has been validated for patients in the ICU. And the recommendations from the society are, are to consider that a patient is coming in with a SOFA score of zero, although this may not always be the case. They've come up with a 
tool that can be used to help find patients who are likely to have sepsis, and that's called the QSOFA score for quick SOFA. And the mnemonic is HAT for hypotension, altered mental status, and tachypnea. And if you have two or more of these, your patient is at high risk for sepsis and should undergo a more formal evaluation. I want to talk about the clinical criteria of septic shock, and that's a little bit more straightforward. The patient has sepsis, as we've described previously, vasopressors required to maintain a mean arterial pressure of greater than or equal to 65 millimeters of mercury, despite adequate fluid resuscitation, and a serum lactate greater than 2, and you need all three. So here is a operationalization of clinical criteria identifying patients with sepsis and septic shock figure. So they begin by saying a patient with suspected infection to do a QSOFA, and if you've got two or more points on there, then assess for evidence of organ dysfunction using a formal SOFA score. And if that's greater than or equal to two, your patient meets criteria for sepsis. And then if your patient also despite adequate fluid resuscitation, is on vasopressors to keep the mean arterial pressure greater than or equal to 65 millimeters of mercury, and has a serum lactate level greater than 2 millimoles per liter, your patient has septic shock. They mention over here the QSOFA variables that I mentioned previously, and over here the formal SOFA evaluation. So there are some issues to be worked out, and again, this is not surprising given the significant change for a clinical syndrome that has been difficult to measure, difficult to treat, and has remained with similar definitions for more than two decades, is emergency medicine societies who care for a large number of critically ill patients have not fully endorsed these recommendations yet, and there are significant concerns from some representatives of the American College of Chest Physicians, and they have yet to endorse these there are no recommended changes yet for regulatory agencies or for hospital QI departments in terms of how they're defining sepsis and how they're treating it, and there are no changes yet in the surviving sepsis campaign bundles to care for patients with this disease. And the recommendations that I got out of attending the SCCM meeting was that all of us around the world will for some time need to be comfortable that there will be at least three different three different definitions of sepsis at this point. There's the recently published sepsis 3, or 3.0 as people are calling it, CMS, and CDC will have its own surveillance definition. So I want to conclude by saying this is the first time in 25 years that definitions for sepsis have changed. It's a big deal in critical care medicine. And to keep focused that sepsis is now defined as infection with organ dysfunction, to focus in on being comfortable with measuring the QSOFA and a formal SOFA score, and that septic shock is now defined as sepsis, being on pressors uh, despite adequate volume resuscitation, and having an, ele an elevated lactate. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video, and again, as was mentioned by the members of this working group, they believe that feedback will be important for them, and there should be, this is as per them, there should be changes over time. There's an excellent website, jamasepsis.com, that has lots of important links and other videos to help learn more about these exciting changes. Thanks again for watching.